see what are the items prioritized and got down to job. Actually, this enabled, a lot of people ask this question, how do you manage the stress? I may sound too simplistic, but I think my learning has been that you avoid the stress. You don't allow stress to come in because once the stress is there, the managing is very difficult. I recall on a travel to Indore, I used to take train at times from Khandwa or Ratlam or Bhopal, midnight. And I would work with my colleagues all the time from 7 in the morning when the flight arrived from Delhi to midnight, in the car also. But there was just one taboo. I did not get any papers home. When I had retired for the day at the guest house in Aisha in Indore also, if anybody had to come at 9.30 to get some paper signed or otherwise, he had to first bring in a written note that why it could not be done during the time we were at work. And these are few personal rules which make a life, a professional's life, a manager's life, relatively stress-free. Let me now come to this stressful subject. The Aj and tomorrow. What is happening in the industry? And what are the challenges? And what are we going to be looking for? I think most important is to recognize whether you are in the small scale, you are a middle, medium size or a large, is that globalization is a reality. Even the small scale player who makes household stuff has to recognize that it's a globalized world and what he produces and sells at a price X, China can produce, export to India, and sell at X by two. Now, small scale cannot, medium scale cannot keep its eyes shut to what is happening on a global platform. But our responses to the global or a globalization would depend on our, in the context and the understanding of globalization. Globalization is no nature of force or driven by people. I think these are, this is something which is the agenda of the powerful governments, powerful countries in the world. Globalization is not driven by technology. Globalization has been enforced on the world by the muscle of the multinationals. Yes, globalizations mean growth. There's no alternative to growth. Growth is the only tool which we can have to tackle poverty. But have we seen the downside of the globalization? Whether you look at, at the global scale or you look at, at your own home in our own country, Globalization is while creating wealth, which is essential, is also increasing the gap between the rich becoming super, super rich and the poor becoming more poor. There are millions who have become from poor to low income and low income to medium income, but there is a large unfortunate lot which has become poorer and the gap between the poorest and the richest has increased. And I think that's the cause which you need to address, that we need to change the rules and the globalization game. And 
I think this is where transformation of the Indian industry has been remarkable. What happened in 91 when competition was ushered in after liberalization? Three major things happened to Indian industry and the managers. The first one was that the decision making, the authority, the attendant risk for the first time were assigned to the managers where they belong. Earlier, all decisions were taken by Udyog Bhavan. What product, what technology, what specifications, what quantity, where to import, what to import, how much. Everything was decided in Udyog Bhavan, DGTD, and the rest. But in 91, when liberalization took place, Indian managers got what was due to them. Secondly, the Indian owners and managers found their entrepreneurship being resurrected. Earlier, the entrepreneurship was to walk the corridors of Udyog Bhavan to get a license or to stop somebody else's license and permission. But now, the threat that I have competition from companies from abroad suddenly brought the entrepreneurship that I can also create competition for others. And which happened, actually. The Indian industry's transformation has been remarkable. And third thing what happened to Indian industry was that for the first time, Indian industry started thinking strategically. We learned, we started making strategic plans, we started having a strategy beyond the government to the customer, to the shareholder, and the rest. And I think these three changes which happened resulted in the transformation where India today stands very proudly. There's still a long, long way to go. I mean, I'm not saying that we can be complacent. But the achievement of Indian industry over the last 20 years is unparalleled in the history of the world. Whether you look at research and development, you look at marketing, you look at anything. I mean, we were always proud of our institutional setup, the courts, etc., etc. But I think today we are very proud of our service delivery. Indian products are no more cheap. Japani Indian products, they are Japanese Indian value for money. And I think this is where the globalization rules are being now changed and dictated. Or not dictated, certainly as yet, but being participated in, China dictates, we do contribute in changing the rules of the globalization by taking the challenge into the turf of MNCs, multinationals, by becoming transnational, multinational ourselves for various reasons. And I think this is where a small and medium industry needs to re recognize that in that context, what is the best roadmap for my own success. An innovative small organization with new products, new technology, imagination can address the market, can address the domestic market, can address the international market through partnerships. Someone who is more competent in value add, whatever processing, machining or otherwise, needs to perhaps identify a globalizing value chain to become partner. Not exclusive, not 100%. Maybe everyone is looking at supply chain management to every large company is today becoming brand owner, aggregator, marketeer. Value add is somewhere else. Both 